ideologies, their motivations, who, what they have done. And I think that looking at the career of Igor Gurkin is more demonstrative of what modern Russia is than even looking at uh, Vladimir Putin. He has always kind of been in the background. He's kind of Forrest Gumped his way through uh, the Russian history of the last 30 years. So if we look back, he really began his career as a member of these ultra-nationalist, far-right, neo-Nazi student movements uh, in university. He was a member of history groups. He was a member of historical reenactment groups. Um, he was a monarchist. He was a supporter of the white forces in the Russian Civil War, uh, things that have become much more apparent now. But if you were to explain this to people in the 90s, the 2000s, even the 2010s, it was always kind of in the background and not always readily seen. But he was one of these people within this ultra-nationalist milieu that has now really kind of uh, captured what it means to be Russian. So that's where he started, within these student groups, within these kind of historical reenactment groups uh, that were just romanticizing the Russian empire, the Russian monarchy, um, the ideals of uh, autocracy, nationality, and orthodoxy. But then he started at this newspaper called Zavtra. Zavtra was, again, this very right-wing, ultra-nationalist monarchist newspaper. And he did it with Alexander Borodai and Alexander Prokhanov. You will remember, you may see these names elsewhere. Borodai was um, another person who was a high-ranking member of the so-called Donetsk People's Republic. He was prime minister for a period of time in the Donetsk People's Republic. While Alexander Prokhanov is a Russian nationalist writer and one of the kind of brains behind that whole ideology. So at Zavtra, we see kind of the initial formation of what would become the Donetsk People's Republic. It was not done Donetsk. It was done in Russia in the 90s by these ultra-nationalists. Like the people literally responsible for the creation of the DNA. 